and welcome to Velodyne LiDAR's virtual CES 2022 experience. I am Jane Maynard, Velodyne LiDAR's Senior Manager of Communications. With our company's commitment to safety paramount, Velodyne made the decision to not participate in person at CES 2022 due to the surge of COVID-19 infection rates. We want to thank everyone for their flexibility and extend our well wishes of health and safety to all in the new year. In lieu of our in-person booth experience, we are providing our partners presentations in a virtual format here on Velodyne LiDAR's YouTube channel. I am happy to introduce you to Blue City, a company whose AI solutions facilitate the improvement of road safety and mobility in the road networks. In partnership with Blue City, Velodyne LiDAR now offers Intelligent Infrastructure Solution, or IIS. IIS pairs Blue City's award-winning AI-powered software with our LiDAR sensors to monitor traffic networks and generate real-time traffic data and analytics. Asad Lasani, CEO for Blue City, will now present to us discussing Blue City's AI software and IIS. I will let you take it from here, Asad. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Jane. Um, uh, I'm really excited being here today. Uh, so. Uh, as you see in this uh, picture, so we built a real-time multimodal traffic monitoring system using LiDAR technology. But before uh, talking about the solution itself, I'd like to give you a little bit background about the reason behind using LiDAR technology for traffic monitoring. So traffic monitoring technologies are widely used in transportation projects. Uh, traffic operation requires uh, real-time access to the traffic data uh, projects related to the traffic planning typically requires historical data. And then when it comes to the safety improvement, especially for vulnerable road users, uh, we need a technology that provides detailed information about the movement of uh, different type of road users, including pedestrian and cyclists. And with all this data available, then we need to have some sort of data analytics platform that converts traffic data into insights that we can easily use uh, within the daily activity of uh, a city operation. So that's why we built this real-time multimodal traffic monitoring and data analytics platform using LiDAR technology. The reason behind using LiDAR is, first of all, we needed to have a technology that works in different weather and lighting condition. It's reliable. And the reason is that, especially for traffic operation use cases, we need to have the solution that can work again, in different weather and lighting condition 24 seven. And that's why we're using LiDAR technology on like camera based technologies. So, and, and, and also we need to have a solution that um, can capture multimodal traffic data, including classification of pedestrian and cyclists. And this is not something that we can get from reliable technologies like radar based solution or inductive loops that they are mainly just providing data about uh, vehicles, back of stop line, or counting them. And, and uh, using LiDAR, we can achieve a non-intrusive technology, typically single sensor at the corner of the intersection, which dramatically reduces the cost of the installation maintenance uh, for municipalities. And we have different type of connectivity options. We're engaged in different uh, 5G-related applications, uh, more to our futuristic application around sharing data with connected vehicles, um, and, and one of the interesting aspects about LiDAR when you compare it with camera-based solution is uh, protecting privacy. So with LiDAR, there is no way that we can identify face of people or callers. And that's the way that we basically are complying with GDPR um, requirements uh, within different countries, especially in European countries that GDPR is really important. But looking at the intersection, uh, so the way that LiDAR works, LiDAR generates a real-time 3D representation of intersection or in general, whatever is uh, in front of the sensor with emitting hundreds of thousands of laser beam every second. And based on the reflection of laser beams, we create a 3D representation of infrastructure. In that case, it's a 3D LiDAR. And then we have an edge computer that will be attached to the LiDAR locally at the intersection. And then we build a deep learning mo uh, models basically uh, converts raw LiDAR data into traffic data. So at really low level, the output of our perception software is object detection. Uh, we know the absolute location of the objects, the distance between objects. We know we detect uh, the bounding boxes around the object. So we know what's the length and width of the object. 
as well as the classification of the object. So as you see in this demo, no matter if the object is close to the LIDAR or far from LIDAR, we preserve the shape of the object, which is really important for uh, some of the application that we have on top of the solution, uh, such as near miss detection and conflict analysis. And since LIDAR actively measures distance, so we always have absolute distance between objects as well. So we can precisely measure near misses at the intersection and we can accurately measure speed of the road users, which is one of the factors that we use for our safety analytics platform. So now that we have all this information frame by frame, we have different type of APIs that we, can, we pass this information uh, to our cloud platform, which we run further analysis on top of the data. At the same time, we're using this API, we're, we're opening up this API to our partners that they want to build their own application on top of the solution. So it's basically, we are building an ecosystem of partners that we can work together, including researchers to, to build futuristic application uh, on top of the solution. So when we capture objects, so we basically geolocate that information on a map, as you see, this is our project in Austin, Texas, which in, uh, we have a sensor installed at the corner of the intersection. And since LIDAR is capturing the distance and we know the location of the, uh, the LIDAR, we can precisely map the location of the object, size of the object and a map, as you see, uh, even at far distances around 70 meters back of a stop line, still we can precisely measure um, and uh, identify objects on a street uh, from converting from LIDAR perspective to uh, a geolocation or map. So, as I mentioned, this is basically the technology that we built for different stakeholders in the municipalities. I start with traffic operation team, but typically they need a technology that they can use it to detect if there's a car back on stop line or if there's a pedestrian on crosswalk, so they can fit this information to the traffic controller. So what you see here in this demo is basically we draw some virtual loops. Those virtual loops are connected to the controller. So as you see, you have different colors assigned for each loop because we are connecting to the controller. So we know which phase is uh, which uh, intersection, which approach is green, which one is red. And basically that's the way that we are combining our technology with traffic controlling systems. So we can fit this information to the, uh, to the traffic controller. So we're already uh, um, tested our technology in diff with different vendors and we're using NTC IP protocol to communicate with the controller. And then besides using this technology for traffic operations, since we have connection to the controller, we can also use this traffic light timing status or called SPAT data within our uh, analytics, which basically we identify red light runner, J walkers, uh, over speeding, and, and also offering, uh, as a part of our data analytics, we're offering um, uh, automated tr uh, traffic signal performance metrics or ATSPMs that I'm gonna quickly talk about uh, those use cases. So this is uh, the way that we are helping traffic operation team, but also traffic planning team that in a, in a city, they need to have access to the historical data. And that's why it's a part of our uh, dashboard so the, the, the user can have access to historical data, including the count. As you see, we can uh, count objects per turning movement uh, for passenger vehicle, truck, buses, pedestrian and cyclists. We measure speed of the road users. We provide some statistical analysis on top of the uh, disaggregated speed data, as you see on the right side. Um, as well as some historical data around the speed. So for example, our average hourly speed per each approach, which helps uh, city planners to have a bit of better decision making around um, improving the traffic operation at the intersection. So now the, the question will be how we can help city planners to improve safety at the intersection. That's the part that you can use our uh, Sergate Safety Analytics Platform, which is a proactive approach on safety improvement. And just to give you a little bit background, typically improving safety, uh, safety at, uh, at, at road networks, uh, basically we, we just rely on police reported crash data. But as you know, this, these are really random like parameters and, and it's, it's not frequent. So that's why like if let's say you see a safety issue and then if you wanna uh, solve that issue, so you need to have an, uh, wait another couple of years to see how effective it's and then you need to have another crash to happen to identify another um, yeah, safety issue at the intersection. But with our approach, we're, we're proactively measuring some metrics at the intersection 
including near misses that I'm going to talk about those metrics. So one of the metrics that we're measuring as a, as a, as a factor of conflict at the intersection called PET or post encroachment time. And basically the way it works is whenever we identify a conflict or encroachment zone between different type of road users, in this case, between those two pedestrian and a turning movement car. So we measure a factor called PET. Uh, the shorter the PET, the higher risk of accident will be at the intersection. So this demo is just showing a sample PT, but the, the idea behind the solution is to get access to this data 24 seven. And that's why we pass this information to our databases. We have a heat map that we, uh, you can have access to our dashboard. Those heat maps basically shows location of all the conflicts that we identify at the intersection. Not only we show the location of the object, we also give you some filtering tools. For example, if you wanna just target conflict between pedestrian and cars, you can uncheck rest of the conflicts, then you can play with the time range that you want to extract this information, you can play with the uh, threshold on the speed data, as well as the type of turning movement. For example, if you want to just target conflicts between cars going from north to south and south to east, so you can easily play with those arrows. Now that you have that heat map generated based on your requirements, so then we, we can select those conflicts at the, uh, on, on the map. And then basically we show you disaggregated information. So you know where is that happening? So the location, we have the timestamp of each of the conflicts, the type of uh, road users involved, as well as the type of turning movement, as you see here, and then their PET value, their speed. And one of the interesting features of the system is that you can always have access to a 10 second recorded LIDAR data, which highlights the location of the conflict on that uh, video. And basically those 10 second videos can be used to um, validate the occurrence of the, uh, the conflict at the intersection. And then if you wanna put a report uh, or present to someone, you can download those videos and all, everything will be available 24 seven uh, through our dashboard. So some samples of conflicts that we, uh, we identify, this is our project with uh, New Jersey DOT and Rutgers University. So on the left side, you see there was a jaywalking and we identified that conflict between a pedestrian car. This one is another one in the middle. Uh, we have another pedestrian and, and, and crossing vehicle. And, and basically all this information helps you to have a better decision around um, a use of uh, uh, traffic data and uh, for safety improvement applications. So now that we talked about uh, safety improvement, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we use this technology to um, identify issues with the traffic operation. And we call it automated traffic signal performance measures. So which gives you a real time access to the signal performance metrics. So typically city planners are using a mix of different uh, traffic metrics that typically they manually measure those metrics or they hire third parties to put a, put a system to collect that data and then they manually validate those. With our system, you get access to 24 seven um, uh, signal performance metrics, which you can easily identify any safe uh, traffic operation issues. Uh, just as an example, if you see um, one of the approaches at the intersection, they always have a lot of uh, traffic congestion and the other one is always like um, empty. So then you can change the traffic light timing and all this data will be available for you 24 seven. So you don't need to do any manual calculation. So we measure uh, different metrics such as occupancy ratio, green allocation, phase interval, speed failures, which is one of the most important uh, widely used metrics to identify uh, operational issues at the intersection. And if you, let's say, implement this technology in a corridor, so you have access to corridor coordination diagram, which basically helps you to identify how, how well, uh, how uh, good is the coordination between uh, traffic lights uh, and, and intersections. And then, uh, so we talked about different type of use cases, but as you saw, most of the use cases are around um, um, intersection monitoring, but we use this technology for other applications such as runway detection, ramp metering, et cetera. This is another uh, case study around monitoring a ramp. So as you see, there are two ramps merging to a major arterial and still we use a single sensor to cover and monitor uh, and track uh, vehicles back of uh, stop line. 
So as you know, Velodyne has a range of different type of LiDAR technologies, uh, including, and, and this demo is basically one of our projects that we use uh, Alpha Prime, which is 128 pixel LiDAR. And for sure with that higher resolution, longer range, we can get even more uh, detailed information in longer distances. For example, when this uh, five lane each um, direction intersection. So as you see, we are covering the whole intersection still with a single sensor, but also we get a longer coverage area, something around um, 100 meters, 150 meters back of stop line. This is something that you barely can find a system, especially with just a single sensor at the corner of the intersection to achieve um, all this uh, uh, interesting um, uh, traffic data. And, and something that I was uh, also like to quickly talk about is how when you when you want to use a new technology, so you need to really understand the benefits of it or existing technology. So we see what cameras are, are widely used for traffic monitoring and planning. But something that again, like the, the, the main challenge with cameras is that cameras are providing really good data about pedestrian and cyclist cars, but the, the performance of those technologies are really limited to the to the proper lighting condition and and basically especially for for safety um, improvement application or real time application we need to have a system that works in different weather and lighting condition and as you know majority of the interest uh, road uh, accidents are happening during low lighting condition and then this uh, pilot project that we did uh, in in Quebec in Canada. Basically, our customer compared our LiDAR-based solution probably with the camera-based solution. And basically, as you see, um, not only the, the performance data accuracy was higher between these two technology, but our, our solution was uh, providing more accurate data. But the interesting point for them was the consistency of the accuracy in different weather and lighting condition. And as you see in this two, two snapshot, you barely can spot those cars back of the stop line because of the low lighting condition and snow. But with LiDAR, you can clearly see, detect, and classify uh, those vehicles using our um, uh, real-time uh, traffic monitoring system. So uh, I think that's all uh, I wanted to talk about. And then uh, if there's any other questions or uh, more information, uh, please uh, reach out to me. Thank you very much.